Hi everyone, I'm Parth and I'll be presenting WeaveGuard, which is a defense framework against audio adversarial attacks. I'm one of the co-authors of this work in which we propose a defense framework for speech recognition systems. Speech recognition systems are being heavily used in various personal devices, home electronic systems, and car navigation systems. And oftentimes speech serves as the primary interface for these devices. So it's important to ensure the safe and reliable deployment of ASR systems. And for that, we need to do a careful vulnerability analysis, find out the threats that exist, and ensure we have the necessary defenses against the threats. One of the commonly studied threats against ASR systems is as adversarial attacks. Now, adversarial example is any slightly modified input that causes the network to make an error. And they, it has been shown that neural networks in various image and audio domain are susceptible to such attacks. For example, in the case of audio, we would design a very small imperceptible noise such that when it's added to an input, it causes the ASR to transcribe the audio to a target transcription, like cancel my meeting, or the attacker can just try to get a transcription that's very different from the original transcription in the case of untargeted attacks. So the way these attacks are performed is that the attacker defines an attack objective where the attack objective is to minimize the distance between the adversarial example and the original input under a distance metric D. And we want to also cause an error in the prediction, which could be making the output closer to a target class for a classifier, or just making the output much farther away than the original prediction. And then since in the case of neural networks, everything is differentiable, we obtain the gradient of this objective with respect to our input and move the input in the direction of the gradient to construct the adversarial example. So to prevent such attacks and detect adversarial examples, there are some insights from the image domain from the defenses that have been attempted. One of them is that uh, predictions for adversarial inputs are often unstable and small changes in the adversarial inputs can cause large changes in the network's output. So using this insight, some of the defenses like compressing the image using JPEG and then decompressing it have shown that you can recover the original label uh, with a very high confidence. However, people have also studied adaptive attacks to such defenses, in which case it is assumed that the attacker is completely aware of the transformation function being present as a defense. And in that case, the attacker modifies his or her objective to incorporate the transformation function in the attack loss function. And using this, they can now construct adversarial examples that are robust to the transformation function. If the transformation function is not differentiable, then the attacker can use techniques like straight through gradient estimator, where a gradient across the uh, transformation function G is assumed to be the same as that with respect to the output. Uh, and in that case, uh, it has been shown that with a slightly higher amount of allowed perturbation, we can construct successful adversarial attacks. So there are some open questions in the audio domain, one of them being that do input transformation functions also serve as a defense in the audio domain in the non-adaptive attack setting? The other being that can we recover the original transcription if we transform an audio and then pass it through the ASR? And the last being that how effective are these transformation functions in the more challenging adaptive attack setting? So we address these questions through our defense framework WaveGuard. So the idea behind WaveGuard draws insights from the image domain and we use a transformation function G. And we found that for transformation functions like downsampling the audio and upsampling it, or quantizing the audio and dequantizing it, uh, like simple compression decompression based transformation functions, we found that the transcriptions for X and GX for benign audio samples is very similar. However, in the case of adversarial audio, the transcriptions for X ADV and G of X ADV are very different. And if we can numerically measure this difference between the transcription, then we can define a threshold beyond which we can classify an audio as adversarial and below which the audio will be benign. 
So in our case, we use the character error rate metric, which is commonly used in ASR system. And formally, our defense framework works like this, that we use a transformation function G, and then we observe the character error rate between the transcriptions of X and G of X. And if it's beyond T, we classify the audio as adversarial. Now we considered these following uh, transformation functions in our defense framework. So out of the five transformation functions we studied, three of them are naive audio transformation functions, which use simple compression and decompression techniques that are common across various domains like audio and images. One of them being quantization in which we quantize each audio bit to n bits, each audio sample to n bits, and then reconstruct the audio from these quantized bits. The other being we downsample the audio to a smaller sampling rate and then resample the audio. And the last being filtering in which we filter out the higher and lower frequencies using a bandpass filter. Finally, we studied two uh, transformation functions which use perceptually informed representations. And I'll be talking more about these in the next few slides. But the idea is that if you compress audio to a perceptually informed representation, then it should be harder to uh, have the adversarial noise be embedded in it while keeping it imperceptible. So the MEL spectrogram extraction and inversion pipeline looks like this, where we have an audio and we do short-term Fourier transform to get the magnitude spectrogram and the phase information. We then discard the phase information and compress the magnitude spectrogram to get the MEL spectrogram. And then we follow the inverse of these lossy compression steps to estimate the original waveform. And depending on the compression factor on the MEL spectrogram, it will be like harder or easier to reconstruct the original waveform. Uh, but we multiply it by the inverse of the MEL transformation matrix to get the estimated magnitude spectrogram. And then we use an algorithm like Griffin Lim to estimate the phase information. And then we do inverse STFT to get the waveform. The linear predictive coding transformation tries to model the human vocal tract system. So it tries to model the way speech is produced by humans. And for this, we window the signal into uh, overlapping windows. And for each window, we try to estimate each sample as a linear combination of n previous samples. And depending on the value of n, we can have a higher or lower compression factor. And then we use an excitation signal and then used a filter with these n samples to perform a convolution and estimate the original signal. So we considered these attacks in our evaluation out of these uh, two of them, Carlini and Kenai and Kenar, are the targeted audio attacks. And the universal adversarial examples is an untargeted attack. And these are the victim ASRs for each of these attacks. In the non-adaptive attack setting, we find that we can reliably detect adversarial examples using various transformation functions. We find that it is easier to detect targeted adversarial examples crafted using Carlini, Kenai, and Kenar attacks. And for many of the transformation functions, we are able to achieve a UC score of one for the targeted attacks. However, the evaluation is more interesting in the adaptive attack setting, where we assume that the adversary has complete access to the defense and victim model. In this case, the attacker modifies the objective by trying to transcribe both x plus delta and g of x plus delta to the target transcription t. And to do this, the attacker will need to differentiate through the ASR and also the transformation function g all the way up to x to update x in the direction of the gradient. So for most of the transformation functions used in our study, we use differentiable implementation, both in the forward and backward pass. Uh, for downsampling and upsampling, we use an approximate gradient of G in the backward pass, where we simply use bilinear interpolation to uh, estimate the gradient during the backward pass. We find that for perceptually informed representation, it is much harder to break the defense as compared to the naive audio transformation functions. For example, if we allow an initial distortion of 500 in the L infinity norm space, we find that the defenses using downsampling 
quantization and filtering can be broken easily with a much lower distortion as compared to the initial allowed distortion bound of 500 and the AUC drops below 0 0.5 and the detection accuracy drops down to 50% for these transformation functions. However, for MEL extraction inversion and LPC, these defenses cannot be broken with an initial allowed distortion of 500. So we successively increased this allowed distortion all the way up to 4,000. And we found that we were able to finally break them at a much higher amount of perturbation as compared to the naive audio transformation functions. Also very interestingly, we observed that when we were using a straight through gradient estimator, we weren't able to reduce the AUC by any amount for the male extraction and the LPC transformation functions. However, these three naive transformation functions could be easily broken even with the straight through gradient estimator. Finally, these are our main contributions. We proposed a formal defense framework that achieves state-of-the-art performance for detecting audio adversarial examples. The computational overhead of waveguard is very minimal since transformation functions are computationally much cheaper as compared to the inference of the ASR itself. Also, the defense framework is robust to adaptive attacks when we are using perceptually informed representations. And the defense can be directly used with any ASR model without needing to retrain it. And we only need to adjust the threshold, the detection threshold, to get a good detection performance for our use case. Thank you. Our code is available at the following link.